Yeah, coach, going back and looking at the film, um, I don't know. I, I didn't think the offensive line blocked maybe as bad as we thought coming out, but maybe there was a problem here and there with, you know, just having seven real drives. Man, I tell you gets what. exacerbated. I thought they, in all honesty, I thought they, how you could convince your team of this is how we're going to win. I guess it's the old Dean Smith four corners. You, you know what I mean? Uh, especially with the clock like it is. What was the game? Two hours and 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Well, then you start pressing because you're supposed to win by a bunch of margin. It didn't go so well at first. Uh, here's what I saw. Um, we're not covering. We're, our fits up front have to get better. In other words, everything's getting popped out to safeties, and we're not making any of them miss either. Uh, so we've got to make safeties miss. We quit putting RPO on the back end of it. Uh, we weren't particularly throwing the ball well either, weren't catching it. And so we, at some point, Dan and I had a conversation about we're going to win the game. Let's see if we can't try to get establish, get our run game going. This And we tried several different things. You know, we found out some things that we can do and some things that we can't do. Um, how we could take the ball with the last six minutes and displace the line of scrimmage like we did and not do it at the beginning. We've got to figure all that kind of stuff out. But, but the bottom line is this, is that – our fits aren't good at tight end. They've got to get better. Our fits are not good consistently up front. They've got to get better. Our blocking on the outside is on edge. It's got to get better. Um, our, our catching game, you know, we had two third downs. We dropped the ball. We, we stay on the field. The game could be much different. Those things we have to get better. Um, but after I saw that, I actually thought we played better last week than we did this week up front. But I didn't think we played too bad, actually, last week up front. Uh, this week, it's all about edges. It's about uh, displacing linemen. And when we're in double teams, the only time that we truly displaced their D-line is at the end of the game, the last six minutes. Those things have got to become more consistent. I think Bo has to become a more vocal leader. He's got to go. I think having Brady back will help us. But um, uh, we have to get better there. We, we're addressing it. We, we, we addressed it last week. It may not be just a quick fix. I think um, where we're going in the order of how we're playing our games is going to help us with uh, a new coordinator, and there were some mistakes, you know. Uh, a new coordinator uh, continued to try to figure out exactly what we do well, what we can do well. But you have to do something well, and I think our backs got to run harder. You mentioned after the press conference there was the pin and pull play where you were talking about hitting the hole. I think you were talking about second quarter. You saw it. Yeah, and With the venue seven. kind of bounces it out. Well, later in the game, he, he actually was hitting it. Is Made that a, a safety miss right. and got – and got eight or ten yards on the play. Is that a conversation that you have? Is it like you have to trust the hole's going to be there? Because Limmer blew it open about the mm -hmm. same time. Or is it you have to um, you have to have patience? Is it trust or pay? What's what's the what what pen and pull is? You got to understand the play. I think you know what I mean. What pen and pull is is it is going to it should guarantee you getting the ball outside the tight end. It should guarantee that because you've seen so many stretch plays that are full zone blocking plays, and they hit behind the center. I mean, you know, that we're acting like we're stretching. Every now and then it'll hit front side of the tackle. Never gets outside the tight end. And it's a – well, pin and pull is one where you're going, I'm going to get in space. You know, obviously you don't want to pin and pull if they're in a nine technique. You're not, you're not, you, you'd rather run some kind of inside gap scheme, inside zone. But if someone's going to give you that, you want to take advantage of it. You can get out to the edge, but then it's kick out, cover. That's just what it is. So when our tackle went to kick out, we just kept trying to outrun the kick out block. Well, that's not the design of the play. And so, again, are we, you know, it's a new play for us, but uh, we should be better than that. We run it all the time in practice. So I think that is just trusting and understanding the play, to be perfectly honest with you. The questions we asked the other night, 
uh, about your run game, your fans have seen a team that ranked seventh in the country in rushing mm. the last two years. So maybe is it too much to expect that a bunch of new linemen, a new coordinator, that you can hit at that level and then you got to build, build up to that? You know, it's just a different offense. I think that's whenever you, whenever you, you know, go with hire new coordinators, you that's your biggest fear that something that's worked well in the past doesn't anymore. You know what I mean? Or, and we've had our trouble running the ball uh, last year, last two years at times, but but we've been pretty consistent. You know, running the football. Um, so no, I don't. I don't think that's. Uh, you know, I can promise you whatever the concern would be. No, that's not true because they're concerned a little bit more than me about different things. But uh, the concerns of the fans, certainly, uh, I can promise you we want to win and have success as bad as anybody. And so I, that's valid. Um, we got to fix a way. We got to find a way to fix it. I'm not for sure. I think I might have said it the other night that having RPOs on the back end of some things, uh, it can dictate – the numbers in a box, you know, unless they're just willing to play man-to-man -man coverage the whole night, which our league probably will. Um, but if you're not having the threat of throwing the ball, which we took away, um, then you're going to get a loaded box. And and that's that's what happened. Then it becomes frustrating because, you know, I said I've never been around a team that couldn't run inside, inside zone, and we haven't had success with it. And – it's either we're not getting the movement, our fits aren't good, it's kicking outside to an unblocked safety. Um, so all those things we, you know, we went in depth with yesterday about how, how can we give our kids the best way of, of winning. And it doesn't necessarily have to be running the football, but you have to run the football to win, in my opinion. So, so uh, you beat BYU by 17, could have scored at the end and made it 24. Mm. Um, so KJ talked about playing with more passion and, mm. I, and I, I may be understanding the opponent, whatever, but so your players saw a blowout on the road. Do you have to kind of warn them again? This is a different BYU team. And what's the scouting report on that? Well, uh, a hard team, anybody who's undefeated, including us, they're hard to beat. They haven't learned how to lose yet in that season. That group of guys that's playing together hadn't, hadn't been beat. So they, they don't know how to lose. Um, but I think the tape, to be perfectly honest with you, um, you know, they're 2-0, and oh, their tape, they play extremely hard. I mean, they do. They did last year. I think they're a better football team than they were last year. Um, big uh, physical team. Uh, they've got a guy at each level on defense that I think is pretty, pretty really good, 90, their defensive end. Uh, they're – Tule, I love Tule. I loved him last year. Just a hard playing kid, and then Robinson. So they they've got and they've got more than that. But those are kind of standout guys on defense. They run. They're totally different on defense than they were last year. And got a guy from Weaver State in, and they are multiple, multiple now. And against us, because of our not having success running the ball, I'm sure we're going to see a tremendous amount of looks. They move pre snap some things we've got to get ready for. But they ran odd pressure. They're a fire zone team, which we have not seen this year either, where it's true three under, three deep. Um, so they're going to cause us some problems because they move so much. They they blitz quite a little bit. Uh, offensively, they're really big, really good at tackle, really good at tackle. Uh, Kingsley, again, I said it last year, but I tried to get him to go to Georgia. Uh, end up going to Oregon and transferring in, and then they got the kid, Etienne kid, the kid from uh, Oklahoma State at the other huge guys. I think those are two premier type tackles. And then I don't know if Epps is going to be back or not, but uh, he was hurt last – well, he's hurt two weeks. He, he's a really good player at wideout two. Their number two, this Chad Roberts – or Chase Roberts is, is a really – he catches a lot of balls. He reminds me a little bit of R4 to be perfectly honest with you. And then, uh, you know, they got the quarterback uh, transfer in from Pitt. And uh, five, number five is a really good wide out too. So they're a stretch team, a, a boss counter team. Uh, they run a lot more stretch this year than they had in the past. Um, 
I, I think they're still trying to run the ball a little bit as well. Two teams remind me a little bit of each other. I think their defense is playing outstanding. Their offense is playing well. But their defense is, to me, really playing well, like ours. And uh, so it, it's a good matchup. They're a big physical football team. Ball seemed to be playing pretty confident in the second half. You know, do you feel good about his health where he's at, and then I guess the linebacker room as a whole now that Greer's back? Yeah, health wise, he's fine. He's he's ready to go. Uh, we had we had a little problem with the tight end uh, crossing going into the flat. We missed that twice on Saturday, um, but who's running well, moving well, made a nice tackle on, I guess, maybe their longest play the other day, or came down and made a tackle, I don't know, 20 yards down the field or whatever. But, uh, you know, he's just been hurt or out of the game. We've got to get him settled in. But I did think he, he played a fine game. Jaheim uh, Thomas has been probably the most consistent guy that we've had, probably our best linebacker in two weeks. And then, of course, we got Greer in there. Crook didn't get a chance to get in there, just the way the game was going and all that. But we certainly believe in him as well. And then it seemed like you know he made another key block on the goal line. What does that say about him as a guy who you know he's not getting the ball to score, but yeah. he's willing to do whatever it takes? Well, he's our best by far, our best blocker um, down there. And so you go, well, we're going to use in a block. Well, if you don't use in a block, who? You know, what other guy are you going to use? And especially this week with Rocket being out, you know, we don't have, have another real big guy back there, you know. So uh, he's a great kid, great team player. I wish we could have more success handing him the ball. And I don't, I do believe that we will in the future, but uh, it says a lot about his character, you know, especially all the things that he's, he's gone through. Uh, but he has done well uh, on the goal line, as you've said. Make some key blocks, and and twenty three did too the other day. Made a nice block. Team just touched on it there. Rocket is he for sure out this week, and just yeah. how's he doing overall? Rocket will be out this week, and then we'll we'll figure out you know uh, how how fast he can recover. Got to get some swelling off of him, and once we do that, and then we'll see how fast uh, whether we can have him back for LSU. I I just don't know right now. He, with his turf toe, is that an injury he had in, in the Western Carolina game or is no, it in practice? Or? No, he got it on Thursday. And late in the practice on Thursday, um, we we thought he was going to be okay, you know, and then he went out there and just said he couldn't push off of it. And, and uh, you know, and in all honesty, Stewart played played a good game, had one ball caught on him there, but uh, played a good game and it will help us in the future with that. But I, I expect duty back this week. Um, Coach, BYU, they scored 14 in week one and then more than 40 in week two. I'm just curious, what have you seen on film that kind of let that offense take a step forward from I think, week one? I think Sam Houston's really good. I think they're really good on defense. I think they're one of the top 20 as far as ratings go in their first two games uh, that they played. So, I think I think they played a pretty, pretty good defense um, the first game. Obviously, they have some first-time guys, you know, the quarterback, all that kind of stuff. I thought the second second game, you know, if you look at us on offense, and we didn't hardly have any explosive plays, you know, and explosive plays are what you need for a lot of reasons, you know. But BYU got quite a few explosive plays through the air. Uh, they hit 83 for a long pass, and, and uh, um, so I think the run game was better against Southern Utah. Uh, it was a lot better than the week before, but they threw the the quarterback threw the ball much better game two than he did game one, and they made some nice plays off of it. They got good receivers now. And then on the flip side, you know, in that matchup for your defense, it's been a pretty good two weeks. I mean, yeah. what has there anything that's a surprise, or what are you most happy with the defense at this point in the season? Well, we haven't cut anybody loose behind us. You know, I think that's the, you know we're not given. Easy points. Um, we have had a few MAs underneath routes and things of that nature. We got picked the other night in a three by one um, that they end up making that bigger play for us. Uh, we were in man coverage, um, but I think right now we're swarming the ball well. Um, 
I didn't think we tackled as well Saturday as we did the first game. Uh, we're not wrapping up. We got we got to wrap up, and uh, we're just trying to knock the heck out of the guy, and knock him down. Well, you got to wrap him up. Um, but I was you no, know, I've been really proud of our defense. You know, they got I put them in a bad situation. They had to punt goal line. They stopped them. Now you might say, well, they got down there. Well, teams are going to get down there on you. Um, but for two field goals in that game, been really proud. And situational ball, I think we've been a lot better than <clears throat> what we have been in the past. There's a video circulating on the internet of KJ getting Skittles after a touchdown. I don't know if you – what's the backstory behind that? Anything? Mm, no, I guess he just likes candy. I, I don't know. <laughs> if it's a reward or low no, blood sugar? No, <laughs> I mean, it ain't where, uh, I need to find out where he's getting them from. Sam, you've said a couple of times Jaheim Thomas has maybe been your most consistent linebacker. Like, what's he – I guess how what's he doing well, or what yeah, are you pretty, most pleased pretty with? Pretty much mistake free, you know. He he uh, he's right now he's our most consistent tackler. Um, not jumping out of gaps, he's pretty much gap free, uh, gap sound in there, and uh, you know he's just a guy that, well, for those reasons, been playing pretty well. Armstrong's been pretty good for you the first two weeks. Just going back to when you were trying to get him here, does anything come to mind, like recruiting process-wise maybe? <clears throat> he's just a lot better than I thought he would be, to be perfectly honest with you. He's, he's a lot faster. You know, he, sh he, he showed flashes on tape of all the things that we've seen here. But uh, he's – Tesla, let's put it like this. Tesla Tesla's about what I thought he would be. And Armstrong's much better than what I would – thought he would be and I think it's just because of his speed overall speed and his ability to catch but I think it has everything to do with what kind of person he is and he's just a hard work great kid well that both of them are a lot of them are but you asked me specifically about him uh, he's just a real great kid that's appreciative of you know playing before a sold out full capacity crowd and those things so with someone that's maybe playing himself into a few more snaps yeah, you know what's happening right now. None of them's playing very much. You know, um, they've got the rotation. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know who who to take out um, of that rotation. And you know, you got to get Nico in there somewhere too, because he can fly and do does some nice things. But uh, Kiwi is a guy that um, is certainly we're talking about moving up to the one to the ones. However. I think we had uh, – Jeff Coat had over 30 reps, and I don't think anybody else did. Now, the game was – you know, there wasn't as many reps, but uh, they were – most of them were in that high 20s. Now, Stu came in. He didn't have that many, but he was very disruptive. It's good to have him back as well. But he was very – he was he was knocking people, the line of scrimmage back. And uh, so, that's going to cut into somebody's reps too. Jeff Coat got SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week. Can you speak on – what he's meant to you in that game and the two games back. I think he was – well, he showed up. He didn't he didn't really have any production uh, in the first week, you know, and I think that probably drove him a little bit as well. But, you know, um, he was chasing the guy. The guy ran out of bounds on one of them and he just fell down on another one, you know. But um, he played very physical and very hard and, and – uh, it seemed like he was a little bit more into the game this week than what he was last week, but he's he's a valuable kid to us. Marion getting maybe cl closer to being – I know he was injured for in, injured for a while. Is Marion Harris getting maybe closer to playing some and getting a you, look at guard maybe you know, as well as tackle? Well, that's where we're at with him. We we pretty much put him – well, we're, we're doing a little bit of both with him. Um, he's closer. Um, he's closer. Yeah, I, I'd say you're right. I, I'd say the question, he's closer. I don't know that that he's close enough right now to be in any type of rotation, but he's he's closer, yes. We, we touched up. 
there's not any awards for gunners, but uh, Man. yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Tyrone Broden <laughs> has really embraced that role. Um, just your thoughts on him, how well he gets down there, and just you know embracing that role when he really hadn't. Man, seen I wish a lot of he, I wish we could get him some balls. Guy's a good player, you know, but I mean, what do we what do we can have thirteen? What were we thirteen for nineteen or something like that the other night? I mean, that's throwing the ball very much. You know, it's hard to get a lot of catches that way. So, um, I wish he would. I wish we could get him the ball because I, I I think he's really good. But with what you just said, I mean, he's so valuable, and I'm. This is going to be. They got a punter that's punch about 55 yards every every single time and I don't know if that's because of I, I know he's good you know but I don't know if, I don't know the air difference and all that kind of stuff on a punted ball but he's really good so Broden's gonna got a big big I, I don't know if they're gonna double him or not or what right now people can't handle him one-on-one -on -one, you know but um he's 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 done a really good job and, and you know a transfer kid like that to not be getting the balls that he wants and then continue to play like he has says a lot about who he is. If more wide receivers are going to play, but like Satania too, he just saw like 11 snaps and we've seen how explosive he can be. Yeah. What are the thoughts on getting him more action? I don't know. You know, um, then you got to take somebody else. who's doing well. Well, too. you do, but Trey, then you start talking about what are you trying to get accomplished? In other words, if you go to, we need a better blocker out there. He's he's willing and all that, but he's not. You know, he's not as physical as possible, and that probably cost him a few reps. You know, out there. Um, but we every every week we have a rotation that we try to get into with those guys. So because I I want to see. Uh, nobody wanted to be twenty-eight to six, but I, I still I wanted to see um, some different guys. You know, I want to see where we're at, and uh, his reps kind of got skewed a little bit because of we we quit throwing it. You know, but I, I do I think he's really talented. You touched on it earlier about the running play that perhaps wasn't quite understood. Is that one of those things that just has to happen and be called in a game? times you run it in practice no I don't I think it's a good question I don't think so I think it, it all depends on did you run that look in practice you know did have they are they because what they did that was different than the week before is they 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 gap moved before it was just they moved from a gap to head up and then they they swiped bow a couple times um, so <laughs> I think there's some of that, um, you know, on the short yardage. Uh, we missed a run through at the linebacker, things that we practice. Uh, I don't think any of our plays are difficult, you know. Um, but the bottom line is you got to cover them, you got to block them. You know what I mean? You do. And uh, the fourth and one didn't really have anything. We, we had to run through, but um, – we left an edge guy out there. We didn't have a guy to, to block him. We, sh we need to can down a little bit further with a wide receiver. But uh, that's a look that we hadn't seen and, and uh, didn't work out too good for us. You made reference to this today about the faster game, the shorter game. Is your data showing that your play count is substantially lower, number of plays? Well, it's, it is. And – I don't know what we're going to do with it because we, we sure are getting the commercials, you know. I mean, we're doing a good job there. I mean, and I don't mean that negative. We just are. And uh, But the thought of using 40 seconds against a team that you're a big underdog, that's pretty smart now, especially if you've got a frustrated team over on that other side like we were. Um, so – I and mean, we discussed that today in our staff meeting. You know, how how if you decided to do that, how would you talk to your team about it? Would they believe you that this is your best way to win, or would they believe that you don't think you can win? You know what I mean? There's a fine line in there. But the old bull ran the four quarter, four corners offense to perfection. You know, and 
So I don't know, but we've had we had a pretty good discussion on it today as a staff. Yeah, you also said you uh, kind of told Dan, let's let's just establish our run game. So in other words, maybe you felt like some passing stuff was there, but you wanted to keep trying the run. Well, we weren't exactly throwing and catching it great, you know, and I just thought that we could turn around and with the different things we had talked about, especially after halftime, that we could turn around and do some positive things. Well, it uh, didn't happen. So at that point, then now you're trying to make something happen, which I should have never done and went for it on four down, just trying to build a little momentum and things. And that, was, that wasn't very smart. So, I mean, did you have to keep the possibility of going on fourth and one at the 34 yeah. yard line, right? I mean, you don't I want do. to just say, okay. Well, I mean, as you saw, I, mean, I went for it on fourth and four. I've gone for it more fourth down this year than I have in my entire time here, I think. But, and we've scored points off of it. I guess the first game we scored a couple. Everybody's gone on fourth and goal, but the other time, and and uh, then we scored the other day on, I think it was fourth and four, and scored on that. So I'm becoming a believer of it a little bit more, but not not in that situation. Can I ask Nate's question real quick? Since Saturday's game marks the first traditionally big name opponent for both teams, do you anticipate both teams perhaps preparing with increased urgency compared to their first two game week? You know, what's amazing in first two game weeks, what's amazing is is that you prepare for the first game and it's like, when is it going to get here, you know, at some point? Because you prepare about nine days out, and you're when is it going to get here? When's it going to get here? You're assuming that your guys are going to be hyped up because it's the first game of the year and all that kind of stuff. Your second game of the year, I I felt like there was no. We prepared. You can prepare them all you want as urgent as you want. They have to accept that there's a reason for urgency. I mean, they do, and sometimes it's simply because of who you're playing. You know, uh, I think I forget Trey might have asked the question about BYU or Tom. I don't know who did. But BYU, I know this. Last year, BYU was an urgent game. It was a must win for us and all those type things. So it is now. And again, like I say, it's hard to beat a team that hadn't lost. And both of us haven't. So someone's going to have to. But uh, I think our kids understand the urgency of this game. Isaac and Andrew, we, we talk about the contested catches they're making all the time, uh, but to make a contested catch, there's got to be good coverage. Are you seeing the separation maybe from the receivers that, that you want to at this point in the season? Well, yeah, I think so. Um, um, I don't really know if if we catch a couple of those third down ones that I would go, we're not able to get open. You know what I mean? KJ threw the one into a, just an area that Tesla went and, went and got, you know, but they had it. They had two on him, you know what I mean? Um, so, no, I, I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, uh, I just, you know, we caught the ball really, really well game one, and then we, we had a couple drops, you know, that hurt us. So, we just got to catch the ball. I don't – I think we're – I think we're – I don't think KJ's holding the ball too long back there. Couple night games coming up, yeah. first of the season. You have preferences. One's home and one's away. Do you have a preference, like for a home game or away game or anything like that? Or you, you know, I'm not, not worried yeah, about it. Yeah, I would. You know, it depends on who you're playing. But obviously, if you've got a hyped up situation, game, whatever it be, you'd like to play it at night. You know, at home. And you'd like to play that one at 11 o'clock on the road, <laughs> you know. Uh, the only con there's not really a concern, Trey, but well, I guess there is because it's already went through my mind. Is you know we we go at night, and then we go over there at night, and we're you know we're on four 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 in a row on the road, you know. Uh, but that's that's how it goes, and we're, who's to say what? You know LSU or whomever or BYU, what how they're coming off of their schedule of night or day and all that kind of stuff. So, but if I had my druthers, I'd play at home at night and and uh, away at 11 a.m. Thanks, guys.
All right, guys.